Hello again everyone, Deflect here, Firm But Fair Gaming. Want to bring you a video on a Grim Rail. This is a uh, 20 Grim Rail. I want to talk to you about some of the mobs in it uh, and what to watch out for and also the dangerous spots and kind of a walkthrough uh, plus a quick run. So I'll comment uh, when important and otherwise I'll let the run go. But it is a uh, Plus 20 Grim Rails, so not that high yet, but uh, it's <laughs> I haven't done too many Grim Rails on this character, so that's what I could get into. And basically, we uh, we did it in 21 minutes, so really fast time, two chests of the Grim Rail, and just crushed through it. And I'll show you uh, some packs to watch out for on this. So the initial pack, obviously the Technician. The Technician is going to need kicked. Um, they have a... Uh, they have an ability five five hundred thousand volts you need to kick that and you got to watch here because they do go to activate wheels as well so you want to stun them when they go to the wheel and kick them when they activate five thousand five hundred thousand volts uh i just pull the four pack here that's what i do it just makes it easy it's not too much damage you have to kind of deal with the guys running through you which have a frontal so i try and get it away but i this time I, I'm trying to avoid the sleep and trying to get it away from people. So it's it's a bit of a pain as a tank. And you can see there's the 500,000 volts interrupted. And the DPS in this is just huge. It's running with some great guys. They uh, they were just pumping DPS at the whole dungeon. It was awesome. But yeah, we were running four melee and a priest healer. So it gets very crowded in the train with storming. Uh, we had the... Uh, Frost DK, a Rep Pally, and a Survival Hunter. So everyone's up close. But you can see I've highlighted mine with um, the planer I'm using that uh, all the blue ones will be the five, uh, the 500,000 guys and watch out when they go to those wheels. As you can see the wheel on the right. I try and aim the dashers towards the wall uh, just because then they're not getting away from you too much. Uh, you don't have to worry about them moving. But the thing about Grim Rail is it the camera angles in this suck. <laughs> I can barely say it. They're just not good to see. It's tough view almost throughout the whole dungeon until you get to the last boss. But every other camera angle is just brutal. You can see the technician going to the right. Someone managed to kick him before I did, so I dropped a... Uh, a silence on him just in case i wasn't sure if someone got to the kick but we managed to kick him before he gets the wheel activated and then i stun him going for the other activation all in the meantime you're trying to aim these towards a wall very close so your dps can continue to dps this one i missed um but it, it just gets a little chaotic when you're dealing with all these uh overseers to try and stand in one spot and aim them towards a wall and the storming that's bouncing you around every two seconds so it's it's a bit of a havoc right here uh but it, we managed the dps is just popping through the next pack is a lot of the same it's a uh pretty easy pack to deal with what's left is just two technicians one turns into uh one of the shrouded and the other one is just the technician, the overseer. So I try and get the technician, the overseer pointed towards a wall, stun the 500,000 volts. He's activating it. I silence him and we carry on. But as you can see, when you get really close to a wall, the camera zooms down on you, making it very, very hard to uh, go through and notice all the way around. So that was the biggest downfall I found in this is, I knew it was gonna be tough and I've only, I've done a few Grim Rails but I haven't done a ton of them. But that was uh, that was the biggest thing I noticed when I first did the Grim Rail was it was very hard to see all the time. Especially that first week, you know, there's a bunch of stuff you're running the first week was Sanguine and then, or second week maybe was Sanguine and it was just, uh, just a tough dungeon with all this movement we had to do. Now I just tank the boss in one area. Pretty much we have the uh, melee hammering them and the range kind of hitting the other boss when they can. Bring him close when he jumps around you. So that was the main idea, avoiding the puddles and just when he goes up, stand in front of him. And as soon as he comes down, just AOE both of them or cleave the boat down as fast as you can. 
Now there is a play where you can get the two uh, people basically prior to the boss, and you would do that more on tyrannical weeks. It's not overly necessary this week. Um, this isn't a tyrannical. Would it have made it a little quicker? Probably a little quicker, but it wouldn't have made it that much quicker. And you would need, I think you need a hunter to do that again, uh, which we would use a survival on this one, but I can't get them with the DH. Now here we are just crushing uh, the rocket for guys. So we, I have to actually separate them. <laughs> and you'll see me separate them coming up because we were just hammering them and the brute is uh, way higher on health. Uh, one's at 22%, the other was still at 40. So they're now just bursting. And this is where we, like he is just too far apart. One's 17, one's 32. So I start uh, separating here to uh, get some distance. The other one will stay at 4%. We should be able to just crush this one down. And I actually was casting Feldev during that. I, I missed and shouldn't have been doing that. I got Firelock for two seconds, but you can see it goes pretty quick here. He enrages, not really a big deal. He only has 2% and we, we got him. Now going in here, I always pull both these at the same time. They're, it's not overly difficult. Uh, the healer will have a little bit of healing extra to do uh, just because you are pulling both. But it, it's not anything outrageous. Not the most. The biggest thing is to CC that bat, and once you CC it once, then you're fine. Uh, he will just fly around for a bit and then disappear, and then he'll come back and you'll have to do it again. So CC once, you're good. Uh, kick the hypnotize or hypnotis hypnotis hypnotize. Anyway, kick the kick this ability he has. Some something along the lines of hypnotize. Hypnosis, that's it, there it is. <laughs> and just make sure you stun him out of that and he can carry on. He just flies around afterwards and you don't really have to worry about him. Making sure you get out of that purple puddle because shadow eruption causes a nasty dot on you. Now, for everyone who did ask, I have put the weak aura on the uh, the defensive cooldowns for the DH. I did post that, so um, if you are interested, just leave a comment below and I can uh, repost the link. Hopefully, the link has worked. I haven't got a confirmation if it did or not, but I have uh, put it up on the weak aura site. I am going to modify it, though, because uh, Blood Barrier is no longer um, really relevant. That was the big thing. The blood barrier is kind of out, so I'm going to use it. I'll probably use it for either Aegis Shard or some of the other one. I use Codex of the first. I really like that trinket. Um, I need just need a better one, and I'm going to pick a raid trinket. And I haven't decided what one I'm going to get. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to go with the, another cheat death one. I don't really proc the cheat death a ton, but uh, it's always nice when you're pushing higher keys to have a double cheat cheat death. Or I might go with the shard. I don't think I'm going to go with the defensive matrix. I just don't think it's worth it. But uh, I am going to modify it once I get a new trinket. Now, this one, I just pulled them both up here. Yes, with storming, it's a pain. And I almost get knocked off because there's just a ton of storming going on. Uh, you know, four melee, you get bounced around pretty good. And it's, yeah, again, you have a pretty bad viewpoint when you get close to the wall, especially with the storming when it knocks you. It, it kind of zooms in like that and kind of stuck. Uh, the Pally, uh, Pally bopped or sacked me there, so I lost aggro. Um, but I got flown around with a couple stormings and I had to get my bearings back before I get aggro. And fortunately I got it quick enough before they really crushed our survival hunter. But uh, yeah, he, he thought I was in trouble, and I still had quite a few defensives I was waiting to use, but they were, they were just uh, really good. Really fun uh, run we had going on here. The biggest thing, this is a killer, is these gunners on the infantry. They'll cast something called Shrapnel Blast. There it is. It is a frontal, and if you don't kick or stun it, it will crush your tank absolutely crush them. You can move out of the way once it starts, 
But uh, if you don't, like on, a, on my DK, it's really tough to move out of the way and see. <laughs> this comes into the viewpoint thing I had about the Grim Rail. I couldn't see the sleep because it's just you're stuck in a corner trying to control the shrapnel blast away from your party. Because if your party gets hit by that, they're done. It's over. Uh, they do, It just does so much damage right off the start. It's, it's unbelievable. And the next pack we are running... Um, you run into a couple of them. The grenades here are pretty nasty, so you gotta watch out for the grenades. Uh, you will have to watch out for flame tongue. Puts a flame on the ground, as you can see. It's another nasty one. Uh, I actually did didn't get out in time, so their their party got hit. That was just we have four melee with flame tongue is rough. It, it's just tough to see, tough to get out of the way. I saw it being cast, and it didn't get out in time. So now he cast flame tongue again, which puts the fire on the ground underneath. I get fell dead and start backing them up now. I should have backed them up a little quicker, but I was kind of in fell dead and didn't want to break it. <laughs> so now we clear this. I'm going to CC one of these because I don't like dealing with two gunners. And a little heads up on this, they can shoot through the wall. You'll see it here where I try and LOS them around the wall. So I imprison one, taunt the other group. And then I hide behind the wall and he still frontals me through the wall. So that's one thing to watch out for. And then, like I said, when you're going through it, try and stun, kick, do whatever you can to the gunner so that shrapnel doesn't go off. And if it does, try and point it towards a wall away from your party. I tried bait, I didn't bait it good enough there. I kind of missed on that one to bait it towards the side. That was, that was my fault. I was trying to get it over quicker, but such a small area and so tiny for the viewpoint uh we just take this guy one at a time and now i'll just bait it towards the wall and then just move out of the way when it does i'll go back and bait another one so it's just one it's not bad one-on-one -on -one. it's you can melt the guy quick and you can bait the uh the shrapnel but now another another rough pull these mortars will go off and mortars do a ton of damage so you got to watch out for those you can see the spots on the ground and a barrage is also every like the mobs in here just deal a tremendous amount of damage the mortars are going off but they nuke them pretty quick And we're, we're pounding through this dungeon. So another gunner's up there. We know that. We see the two grenaders. Grenadiers, I guess. Uh, you can see the mortars going off. The flame tongue. So trying to watch out for shrapnel. Trying to move flame tongue. They're in the flame. I'm now moving back because shrapnel's coming. They have flame tongue. Like, it's just... This is a nasty, nasty pack. Shrapnel blast. I try to bait to the side. You're back you know back in for the mortar shrapnel to the side again flame tongue like it's it's just heavy damage plus the storming knocks you up and around uh, i do end up dying there but it was worth it because they got it down so the healer's gonna heal them up while i just run back it's not that far of a run i thought i could fly over the one box here but apparently you can't fly over the box they just reset the boss so everyone's healed, we're good. I probably could have waited for a res, but it's it's pretty quick just running back to. And now we got six seconds and we are ready to blast on the boss. So this boss has a frontal, keep it pointed away from the group if you can. I think it's a frontal cleave, I think, but it's just face him away and you'll see the mortars go. When the mortars go off, move out of the mortar way, he always faces towards someone else on the mortar. So as soon as you see that cast, he usually spins around. Again, the viewpoints in this dungeon suck. As you can see, I'm staring at his feet. I can't get a better view. So all I can see is his feet turn. I can't see anything else. And that's because I want to put him towards a corner so he's not cleaving anyone. And then you can see the mortars going off in the background when he spins. Now we phase him. He phased at 60. We got him down to 58. Now 
And then the very key to succeeding on this boss are those cannons on the left. They are extremely important and extremely important to hide behind pillars <laughs> when uh, he's shooting uh, because you don't want to just get take that massive amount of damage. So there is gunners in here for shrapnel blasts, as you can see. Try and aim it towards a pillar if you can and get your other team to fire on other areas or behind them. There's a ton of uh, ton of ads that keep spawning on the sides. As a tank, you got to pick those up as quick as you can. Watch out for the grenadiers. Watch out for the shrapnel blasts. <laughs> Trying to stay around the corner so he's not um, you're not getting crushed. And then your DPS will have to pick up. Uh, what drops on the ground from these grenadiers and shrapnel guys as you can see we had one great guy like running that for us and he was uh he was running the cannons which makes life a lot easy so you can see that guy's highlighted he'll have something to pick up and then the, the boss does fire the flame and the flame out a whole section so you want to make sure you're out of that section when he does it and it, if you have ranged DPS and they're at the back, it's a little tougher to come pick them up, which makes it a little rough when they're hiding, but you know, as a demon hunter, it's not bad because you can leap. I ran out of taunts, so I was having a bit of an issue trying to get anger on these guys hitting the cannon. But our guy's doing a great job hitting the boss with those and then hitting uh, the players as well. So you wanna hit the boss with a bunch of it, shrapnel blast, you wanna hit some players while they're close. Stay out of the flame. It's a very busy, busy boss. And then with the boss, you want to have him so someone can jump in the cannon and then hit him with the uh, the flame. You can just see how quick he melts with using that shrapnel blast flame from the uh, the cannon. It's a great ability, and you can see it just melts the boss to nothing. Now we are we're doing well. We are uh, minute forty three. If we would have finished it, we could have three chested. But uh, we're, we're well ahead of time. And as long as we take the next part slow, we should have no problems. Always go left, it will go right, and then it will do, once you get up there, we'll do both the flames, and then it will always be on the right-hand side. Until that changes, uh, just worry about that. Uh, always kick Storm Shield, and then he'll cast an ability Thunder, which puts a pot, uh, puddle under you, on a Thunder Zone. Doesn't do heavy damage to a tank, but it does to the rest of your party, so just make sure he's on the edge of it, and your DPS can get after him afterwards. Storm Shield has to be kicked. So Thunder put it on the DPS in the back, so I just kind of ease him back a little bit. We're just hitting it from this side. And once this guy's done, you can pull in packs. It, you could probably pull more. We were just taking it easy because we had lots of time. We didn't want to, uh, we want to worry about it, so we pulled just a bit. Uh, again, you have to watch out for the, uh, the storm shields. There is an ability in here. Watch out for the puddles on the ground. Watch out for the swarm. Our survival hunters just popping off in this group. Storm shield need to be kicked. Our, our survival hunter got it. Again, watching out for the puddles and the thunder zone. So it's kind of like facing that boss with just a bunch of mini bosses around. We had some great, the healer's doing great here. He, everyone's pumping on these pack. And after this pack, it's a real easy pack. If you want to save time, you could uh, pull it all at once because the next guys don't really do much. But again, we were we had loads of time. We still have five minutes before uh, to two chest it, so we're crushing through, doing well. And as you can see, you you can pull it all because these guys don't really have an ability. They're just they're just there. <laughs> just do damage. It's not that bad. Uh, we pulled back because uh, the healers wanted some, uh, well, I, I wanted the healer to get some mana because this can be some heavy, intensive healing here. So he sits down and I just wait until he's full. Again, five, over five minutes for a two chest. This boss only has three abilities you need to watch out for. 
Uh, one is the Frost Trap. So whoever calls Freezing Snare, watch out for that. Because it will do AoE damage to anyone near it when you break it. Two is the Puddles on the ground. You can see them at the top. And three is that Spinning Spear. So you just move out of the way of the Spinning Spear. He targets someone and throws it. Freeze Trap. So there's a Freeze Trap. We move, pull it out of the way. And you can see there's a lot of uh, lot of lightning going on, but I just found a spot in the center where it wasn't really there. So you usually find a place in between. Our DPS is, I should have pulled them some way or another, but it was a little tough in the center for them to get fully on them. As you can see, the swirlies, the swirlies have made it so much easier now. It is unbelievably easier. Uh, without those on the ground, and you were just guessing where it was going to hit, was brutal the first couple weeks. You can't tell from the way the dragon flies in which way it is, and it was, yeah, it was, it was not good. <laughs> so they baited the spear, spears out of the way. Watching out for the freeze trap. Our pally, I think, just, uh, just uh, broke one out of the way, so that was great. I did get hit by the spear here, which was bad because I got pretty dropped on health. I uh, was moving the boss and didn't really see the spear coming. And you can see I just take him back into the old old uh, area because I know that's going to expire pretty soon. So we just walk over there. Keep DPSing. And we just crush it out the last couple percent, finishing with, you know, eight minutes and 52 seconds left. So we really banged that one out. It was a great run. Uh, loads of DPS. Like, we had tons of DPS. Everyone was crushing it. Healer was crushing DPS, crushing heals. It was a really great group uh, through the Grim Rail. But that's the idea on how to do Grim Rail. If you have any questions on Grim Rail, Leave a comment below. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, deflect, firm but fair gaming. We'll see you in the next video.